We're here, Dix. We're here. So we're back in Essex again, everybody, and I found another park up on Park for Night. The difference between this week, though, and last week is that I have the inverter all wired up, ready to go. So I really wanted to do an experiment to see how much power I'm going to use from the battery through the inverter, or how much power in general I'm going to be using for this whole afternoon. I've got some things to do on the laptop and I'm going to cook dinner on the induction hob with the inverter. I'm going to charge my camera as well. I think I might do it. Actually, no, there's no point doing it on a socket is there because I would never do that normally. But it's going to be a bit of an experiment to see how much power I use and how efficient the inverter is. But I've just been driving, so the battery should be fully charged. There's no reason why it wouldn't be fully charged. I think the main two things that we're looking out for is obviously the state of charge, so the percentage, and then the consumed amp hours, because our battery has got 100 amp hours, so it'll be quite interesting to see how many of those we use between now and picking Becky up from work. Digby's decided he wants to sit on my lap as well. You want to drive? <laughs> Let's plug that in. Now hopefully this will charge. Ah! <laughs> Let's see how much power my laptop's consuming. Minus 81 watts. And I think the fridge is still running. So we're at nearly 100 watts now being drawn from the battery because I'm charging the laptop. If I do that for a whole hour, that will use 8 amp hours which isn't really much to be honest with you, that's only 8% isn't it? I've got some editing to do anyway, so I'll catch up with you guys in a couple of hours and then we'll see how we're getting on. All right everyone, it's been a couple of hours. I'm just having some lunch, got a lovely cheese sandwich. I was gonna make some soup, but I didn't want to have to worry about washing up the pan because I need to cook dinner in here later as well. So to save washing up, cheese sandwiches. I haven't checked the status of the battery since I last showed you. I'm quite interested to see what it says because I've just been editing some 4K video on the laptop for the last hour and a half. So if we open the app and go back onto the shunt, 88%. So we've lost 12% just from doing that. I suppose it's been continuously drawing about 100, 100 watts. That's a lot, isn't it? Oh, I think the fridge is on as well. So I just got the cheese out. I think the laptop uses 60 watts on full charge. So I suppose if it's been doing 60 watts plus the lights, then I've been charging my phone as well. Still got 88% left though, so plenty for cooking tea. I'm going to finish the sandwich though, and then I think we're going to go for a nice walk. Hmm. I really cannot wait until we're completely off grid and we can just travel around the country just finding spots like this. Just walking the dog, middle of nowhere. Really looking forward to it because you just don't get these kind of spots when you stay on campsites and it's completely free. No ground fees, no reliability on hookup lead, no toilet because we have our own, no need to pay for a shower because we have our own. Just like really excited about it. I just love being outside, not when it's too cold or when it's raining, but just breathing in fresh air, love it. Okay everybody, so it is the moment of truth. We're going to be cooking dinner. For those of you that watch us going away in the van quite often, you'll know that we pretty much have a van pasta every single day when we're away. So vegetables, pasta, and some kind of sauce. So no different today. We've got some spaghetti, a couple of peppers, a red one, a green one, and then we've got some vegetarian bacon stuff. And then we're gonna be having it with some pesto. We would usually have onions and garlic with this, but we forgot to bring onions and garlic with us, which is a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. Everything I'm gonna be doing here 
is exactly the same as what we'd normally do. So I think this is going to be quite a good test to see how much electricity we're going to use. So currently we're on 82% charge. We've consumed 18.4 amp hours and we're currently drawing 35 watts because the compressor in the fridge is on. But if we fire up the induction hob, then this is going to get exciting. Boom. Oh, ho, ho, ho. 1,800 watts. And that's only one of the rings. Oh my God. The good thing about this hob though, is it seems to cook things really quickly. And then if I do the other one as well, oh, I don't know, this is gonna go overkill, isn't it? I might wait until that water's boiling. <laughs> 1,000. Oh. That's not good. I don't know what happened there. We've had a bit of a fail. Be right back. I've got no idea what just happened there, but obviously everything just went off. And then it came back on again without me touching anything. So I don't know what that was all about. It's also reset all of the information on the app, which is really annoying. I'll just add together what we had before we started cooking and what we're getting now, because I've literally just started doing this. And then we'll work out what we used before and then what we've used to cook dinner with. Should we get this one going? Oh, 2,400. It really doesn't like that, does it? Oh, it's turned off again. What's going on? I think I'm going to have to do this one at a time. I didn't realise how much power these hobs actually use. Just that one pan of water, 1,800 watts. So if they're both on, I don't think you can have them both in full power, but yeah, that's nearly, well, that's three and a half thousand watts of power just to do some cooking. That's pretty crazy. I've been cooking for about two minutes now and we've already used 12 and a half amp hours, which is like an eighth of the battery to do like two minutes worth of cooking. So I think when I was saying that we might get away with just having the one or two batteries, I think that was being a bit optimistic. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we're gonna need the three, unless we put loads of solar panels on the roof so it recharges. Right. Okay guys, I think we are officially finished and we've used exactly, well, 40 amp hours, 39.9, to cook dinner which is absolutely fine. It says the state of charge is 17%. I don't really understand that because it's still at 13 volts. And yeah, we've got a 100 amp hour battery minus 40 plus the 10 that was already there. So it's only like half the battery. So I don't know where the 17% comes from. But yeah, 40 amp hours to cook dinner. That's kind of what I was expecting. I thought that the inverter might be able to handle the power from the hob a little bit more. I might be able to play with some of the settings or something. I think Digby's getting a bit hungry. Um, but yeah, 40 amp hours to cook dinner. I don't know exactly what I've used throughout the day because it reset when we had that power cut, but I think it's around about 50 amp hours for the whole afternoon, which is about half the battery, I suppose. So I guess if Becky was here as well doing work, then we might have used perhaps two thirds of a battery in a day, possibly going up to 100 amp hours for a 24 hour period, which means I think we probably need to get three batteries if we're planning on going off grid for a couple of days with the addition of some solar panels as well. But yeah, I'm gonna get this put together and I've got to drive over to go and get Becky. I'm already 10 minutes late, so I need to get a bit of a move on. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a massive thumbs up if you did. We'll catch you guys in the next one. So until then, have a safe drive, stay alive, have a lovely day, and we'll see you next time. So I'm just in the middle of editing this video and I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I think might have happened with the inverter and the power and everything. What I think the problem is, is I think it's got to do with the voltage. So when I turned the induction hob on, then it pulled a lot of power and you can see the voltage taking like a really steep drop when I flicked it on. So I think what's happened is 
as it's pulled the power, the voltage in the, the batteries dropped quite significantly. So the output of the inverter has also dropped from 230 volts down to, I don't know what it is, I need to run another test on it. But I think the voltage has dropped, which is why the induction hob kept cutting out because nothing had tripped all the um, the fuses and the isolation points and everything. They were all fine, so it's not an overloading issue. I think it must just be to do with the voltage, which is what's making sense to me. The solution to that, I think, is just to get more batteries so you have a bigger battery bank so that when you're pulling that much power, it shouldn't be pulling the voltage down too much. We're gonna need more batteries anyway, and hopefully that fixes the problem. But I think that's what it is. And I guess that would kind of explain why everything tripped that very first time, because the voltage dropped so much that it was just kind of like a miniature power cut. It makes sense in my head anyway. So I think that's what the problem is. But that is all from me. We'll see you guys next time. Digby's making a nice, spot oh he stopped now <laughs> he knows when the camera's on him but thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time